Hello everyone and welcome to a new series of Star Trek New Horizons with me, Jamie. Today we're going to be starting a new series looking at the Total Conversion mod for Stellaris that's based on Star Trek and the new release or the relatively new release is called Into the Mirror Darkly which focuses on the um, alternate universe. So I have already kind of reviewed this new release um, in a different series um, I'll put a link to that playlist in the description below, but today we're really going to focus on the alternate universe and the Terran Empire. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select the United Earth um, faction, um, and I'm going to look at the Mirror Galaxy. Um, so it's Milky Way, 1400 plus star systems, 60 plus empires, the Mirror Universe scenario, so a unique scripted scenario, experience the Mirror Universe alternate dimension as played on the Mirror version of the original Milky Way Galaxy map. Your selected empire will automatically be converted to its Mirror counterpart. So I'm going to leave the settings as they are, these are the recommended ones, and I'm going to load the game. So um, I also want to take this time while the game is loading to mention that I have started a Patreon. Um, the reason being is that any money that, um, I mean, so, let's start from the beginning. I really appreciate your likes and comments on my videos. Um, I find it to be a great confidence boost for me. It shows me that people are actually interested in what I'm doing. And, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Um, so, I thought the next step is to actually start maybe investing some more money into... Um, this channel and that would also be for example in the form of playing different games so buying different games and making videos about them or buying better computer equipment because my uh, current computer is not really the best one to play video games on it's one that I usually use for work purposes rather than for uh, gaming purposes um, and well for example I have a very old graphics card that um, probably it's on the extremely low end of the specs for most games nowadays so if i am going to invest more things in this channel i also need to kind of upgrade my hardware especially when it comes to the graphics card um and yeah so i created a patreon page so um, a link to that will also be in the description if you can and if you are interested i would very ap much appreciate you um going there having a look around and if you feel like it um also supporting me financially as well as um, boosting my confidence through likes and comments. So now let's begin. So we're the Terran Empire, um, we are authoritarian and fanatic militarists, um, We, are for our civics we have slavers guilds which gives us a slave output of plus 7.5 percent. We also have efficient bureaucracy so plus 20 percent administrative capacity and we have a temperate world preference, we're also natural sociologists, and we're charismatic, so amenities from jobs plus 20%. So the text here says, Greetings, Legatus Augusti. Since time immemorial, Terra is ours, not only its soil but its blood, its very flesh, and now the very stars that shine down to our hallowed earth. Luna is ours, Mars is ours, the vermin species that scurry in the dark, that used to plot how they shall conquer our home are ours too. Their bodies, their planets, their technology, their very souls are our to do with as we please. For daring to land their vanguard on earth, we have taken their ships and then their empire. Now they shall suffer for 10,000 years more. For too long we have strove, quenching one rebellion after another, bickering between ourselves, diminishing the glory of the empire. Heresy, nothing short of heresy. But now there is a non-human slave at every manor, food on every table. Now is the time to be alive, to be truly human. They will all see what we can do, and all shall feel the might of the Terran Empire. Ooh, nice text. So, begin. First thing we should do, let's have an overview of where we are. So, we seem to have all of this area already. So, I've never played the mirror universe map before so this is a first for me as well as first for this channel in the series so it looks like we have several fleets already yep fleet there and fleet there i wonder can we move those fleets 
Ah, we, there's no route, so we need to kind of explore here very quickly. So I think that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take my science ship and send you there to survey that system, and then that will allow these two ships to be able to move here, I think. Let's do that. Let's also look at our research. Um, so, optical computers, hardened fields, which is for force fields and powerful energy deflector shields. And this is for better military onboard computers. Let's go for the hardened fields, first of all. So, oh, I also need to assign scientists. Uh, this is for the physics research. So do we have anyone with physics? Nothing physics related at the moment. Okay, so let's go for a spark of madness. So on the research for society. Oh. What are you doing? So, research. Oh, I was going to assign a scientist. Research for society. We have research speed for new worlds or. Ooh, Topol. Research speed military theory. Yes, let's go for Topol. And while we're here, we can either go for science station or education reforms. And leadership cost minus 20%. Let's go for that because I think we'll be needing some leaders very quickly. And then here, engineering. We don't have anyone specifically. Wait, did I? So who's on the science ship? Okay. Uh, so let's go. Who's our scientist? Who do we have left? Somebody for New Worlds and somebody for Anomaly Discovery Chance plus 10%. Well, maybe first thing I'll do is build another science ship. I can't do that yet until the end of the month, okay. Then I won't build another science ship, but that means that I will not use this scientist, I will use this one, even though they're the, the wrong, they have the wrong expertise. And then we are going to research the fence pod and like shuttle pod wings, or main engineering console. Let's go for the main engineering console. So, because we're playing as the Terran Empire, I'm going to also kind of roleplay as the Terran Empire. So I am going to try to um, so, in the previous series, as I was playing, I was playing the United Federation of Earth, and I kept saying things like, oh, I'm a nice guy, I think the Federation would do this. So, in this series, I'm going to be the bad guy. I am going to be very author authoritarian. I'm going to try and, um, yeah, play the bad guy. Play people who are out for themselves, as I think the Terran Empire would be. So, let's... Yeah, so oh, we have a relic activation as possible, so we can either do the Terran... Oh, we don't have enough influence. Never mind, we shall wait on that. But why don't we have a look anyway? So we have the Terran Sword of State, so this gives us plus one monthly unity. Um, the active effect, so once, once we were to activate this relic, we would wield the Sword of the Empire. Trained officers gain 250. Oh, so we would just get a bonus of 250 officers. Interesting. Or we have Zephyrin Cochrane's shotgun. So this is the gun that um, Zephyrin Cochrane used. Oh, actually in the text it says, Zephyrin Cochrane used this very first shotgun to kill the first Vulcan who set foot on the planet Earth in 2063, beginning the Terran Empire's advance across the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. It still holds a special place in every Terran's heart, as well as serving as a reminder of Terran rule to the alien races who have been subjugated by it. So this was in Star Trek um, Enterprise. Towards the end of the run of Enterprise, they had several episodes in a mirror universe. Um, and in our, the prime, well, I say our universe, in the prime universe, Zephyrin Cochrane met the Vulcans, reached out his hand, and gave them a handshake. In the alternate universe, Zephyrin Cochrane pulls out a shotgun and kills the Vulcan. Uh, so that's what this is referring to. So that's that. Um, let's have a look at our planet. So we have Earth, which has some job issues, but it looks like... Yeah, nothing... Okay, so at the end of the month, these, this pop, these population will move to fill these jobs. Mars... Oh, okay. The rest of them don't have that problem. It's just Earth. That's good. So Mars has an extra population with nothing 
else. Pajem has four unemployed workers, Denobula has none, okay. Andoria has none, Teller Prime has none. Oh, we have a bit of a problem. So I'm looking and I see that, for example, the Tellerites are acting as rulers, they're acting as artisans, commodores, doctors, but I think if we go to species... Oh, they have full citizenship. I thought they were supposed to be slaves. Oh, maybe this will reset next month. What I'm going to do, something that I can do now, is construction ship. Let's have you build a research station, and then a mining station, and then maybe another mining station, and another research station, and I'm going to unpause the game first, first and foremost. And then at the end of the month, oh, Crown Princess Carla Wang is the new heir to our empire and will take the throne when our current ruler dies. Okay, cool. We have low stability on all of these planets. What happened? Oh, yeah, so it has changed. So if we go to the species, yeah, they've all become slaves. I was wondering, because I was surprised that in the alternate universe they would be allowed to rule themselves. So they've all become slaves, which means all of the jobs they were filling can now... Oh, so the ruler job and the specialist job can only be filled by Terrans, which, uh, yeah. We have an unemployed Terran there. Terran, Terran, Terran. Oh, these are, this is Mars anyway, okay. So on Pajem, for example, there are no rulers and four unemployed workers. So let's... I can't build anything yet. Okay. Denobula, how are you doing? All of the workers... So I assume that for all of these, all of the worker jobs will be filled in. But none of the specialist jobs or ruler jobs yep so i'm gonna have to transfer some people from earth for example let's resettle people from earth to, or actually let's go from mars because we have a terran there who's just kind of sitting there to tell our prime so we now have a ruler there now let's go from um let's go from earth to something like uh, Andoria. Let's move... Oh, so there's unemployed. Okay. Let's move a technician. Nope, decline. Let's move an Andorian. And... Let's move two Andorians for the moment. Um, we don't have enough energy for anything Allow else. Me to introduce myself. Thank you, Q. So you're going there. Oh, maybe now we can build the science vessel, so let's do that. And then what I'll have... Oh, unemployment on Vulcan. Let's say a few criminals are of no concern. Here is something that you perhaps didn't so, understood. Thank you, Q. On Earth, I'm gonna move people again, because we now have 100 energy credits. So Earth... Let's move to um, Vulcan. Vulcan doesn't have a ruler. Let's move a technician and move one of the Vulcans to take, yeah, a worker's place. Also, why don't I give you something to do? So on Pujem, habitability, let's go for, maybe let's say energy credits. Because I think we'll be moving around lots of population. Unpause. Let it run some. So we now have our second science ship. So we're going to assign you this leader and let's send you this way. Oh, let's do this one first, then that, then that one, and then that one. For now. And here, let's have you... I guess let's go down this way. See what's around there. And what I'm also going to do now is have all of these um, merge. So let's do the research first. 
What can we go for that's militaristic? The militia headquarters. And let's have then all of these merge. Are you moving? Oh, you can't yet because you don't know how to get there. Comet sighted to victory. So a fierce plume of flame sears the heavens of Earth as a comet skirts the upper stratosphere. The sheer power evident in its cosmic trajectory has made a profound impression on the capital's populace. They liken the uh, intractability of its path to the inevitability of the Terran Empire's accession to galactic supremacy. Plus 5% happiness. Great. We can also move people again. So let's move um, from Earth to... Uh, so Andoria... Wait, why are you a worker? You should be something much higher. If I go to Andoria and go to population, yeah, there are no... You... Maybe you can't move up until the end of the month. Let's hope that's the reason. Go to Telar Prime and I'll send you... Let's say two slaves and send over a worker. Okay. Uh. Nope. Whoops. Didn't mean to press understood so quickly. It was I meant to press on Teller Prime. So if we go here to our population, we have a Terran and the rulers. And a random Terran working there. Why aren't you moving up? I'm hoping it's just the end of the month thing. Let's go back to population. No, you're still there. Okay, that's weird. Earth. One person unemployed. So, let's take this opportunity to resettle one of our workers. Let's go look at Denobula. No, yeah, so we have a Terran there. Let's look at Pajem. Okay, there's nobody there. So let's take a worker. Yeah, you've become a ruler. On, let's see, Mars. Mars, we don't have anything. Pajem. Let's build another fusion reactor here. Denobula. We have too many workers here, so let's go for... So it's prairie, it doesn't say anything specific, but we have a lot of mining districts. So let's go for a mining district there. So we... Ah, what I will need to do, I guess... Actually, from here, why don't you move there? Because I need to claim the system, I think, because from the look of it, these um, these two star bases here are not connected with my home, which means that they're not um, giving any kind of trade value to my empire, which is not good. So, new research. Let's go for phase cannons, and let's go for polarized hull plating. And we have more um, stuff that we can do. So what I'm going to do is build something else down here that, let's go for a policing system, because we'll definitely need to keep our slaves in check. And then I'm going to resettle, and I'm going to resettle from Yeah, Earth, let's look at Denobula. You still haven't moved up. Why haven't you moved up? Well, I'm going to take two miners and give them two Denobulans, for example. How is Earth with jobs? Okay. So let's take... Let's go to... So Bajem, you're fine. Let's tell our Prime... You could probably do with another specialist. So let's give you a worker there, and let's... Oh, I can't take 
anybody yet. But I can do research, so let's go and... Um, oh, a research capital so we can upgrade our... Oh, uh, ooh, an unknown source of quantum particles has been detected in the vicinity of Struva 2398A. So, research. So, understood about the different planet types. We'll get into those. Oh, Imperial Onslaught Fleet was forced to to return to Pujem from Fort Rodney because it's within the borders of the Coalition of Hope. Ah, oh, we have a rebellion. So we can either become the Coalition of Hope or we can wipe these aliens out. Let's wipe them out. We are going for the uh, militaristic way. So let's do that. So we are now at war with the Rebellion. Cool. But let's look here. Their fleet power is equivalent to ours, so this is going to be a little bit of a problem, I think. So we have energy again, so I'm going to... You're building a fusion reactor and you'll be fine. We need to move population there. Denobula, you have lots of jobs and very few people to work it. So let's go for an entertainment center and then let's resettle someone from... Um, Actually, let's go for Mars, for example. That's, these Terrans shouldn't be workers. So, ah, but you're a worker. Why? Why? Denobula. Jobs? You have lots of specialist jobs open. Why have you not moved to a specialist job? Does it take a certain amount of time before they move? I didn't think so. Okay, let's look at Telar Prime. At Telar Prime, one human there. So can we move from Mars, Mars to Telar Prime? Let's move a Terran worker and move Telar right there. Okay, and let's move another one. And put another Tellarite there. On Mars, we don't have any more jobs, so... Yeah, we need to wait until another population grows, and then we can build something else there. Good. So you, why don't we build... Hmm. So it seems we have the most agricultural district, so let's build large fields and kind of see where that gets us yeah you're moving there okay oh and let's have you merge oh so this this is the coalition of hope down here and this okay so they have those two systems this is going to make life interesting, to say the least. So, a source of quantum particles appears to be traceable to a small vessel in orbit of Struva 2398A. Sensors are unable to penetrate its hull and it appears to be drifting. Let's open hail and fre frequencies. A matter of time. The vessel responds to the hail. Captain Miroslav uh, Volkov, please move about one meter to your right. Confused, the captain moves aside as a Terran materializes on the bridge. Excellent. My name is Professor Finn Stevens, and I've traveled back in time two centuries to study the crew of the ISS Franklin. The exploits of this ship and its captain, um, Volkov, are legendary in my time, he says. Let's seize the time traveler. Panicking, Finn Stevens activates an emergency transponder to his shuttle. The swift work of the ISS Franklin science officer, triggering a fermion pulse, counteracts the beam-out process. The professor is held in the brig, eventually confessing to be a con artist from the century prior, who stole his time shuttle 
from a real-time historian. While the shuttle is brought into the cargo bay for analysis, it appears to have been set on a timer and disappears inside the ship in a burst of chroniton particles. A few components removed from the vessel have been left behind, however. Oh, so we get some research. That's good. Oh, scum and villainy on Denobula. Crime continues to be a problem on Denobula, an extensive criminal underworld has now taken root on the planet. Some areas have descended into lawlessness or have been taken over completely by criminal organizations. That's not good. And the reason really is because of... Yeah, we need to move people. So why don't we go to the population and resettle. Let's move from Earth, I guess. We have this one last worker, and let's move an unemployed slave. On Earth, we have two jobs. What kind of jobs are they? Oh, they're worker jobs. Good. So, Denobula, Resettle, and two of the unemployed population. And on Denobula, you're building that, okay? On Pajem, unemployed worker, but well, we don't really have the space for building that much. Let's build another large scale fields there. Well, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Ooh, the NX project. The rebels strengthen their position with each passing day, but so does the Terran Empire. Designs for a new kind of weapon and tactical system are under constant development. Special research teams are digging deeper and deeper into databanks of the conquered alien species, searching for anything that could provide the Terran Empire with an advantage in the war. One of those teams now believe they have gathered enough information from the Vulcan database to assemble a number of prototype cutting-edge systems, including an incredibly powerful Warp 5 engine. They have addressed Emperor Yi Wang himself with the proposition of the NX Project, a series of advanced battlecruisers which would be able to deliver a quick and decisive killing blow to this rebellion. These ships will not come cheap, but when finished they will become the most destructive weapon in the Terran arsenal. Let's proceed with the NX Project. That would be nice. But also on Teleprime, let's go for another... let's go for an entertainment center. On Denobula, nothing. On Earth, why don't we build so nice amount of mineral districts, commercial. Let's, I guess, let's go for policing system. Not, hmm. Let's go for something we can move um, slave population to, which means one of the base producing things. Let's go for fusion reactors, because we'll need energy to move people around. In orbit of a lifeless planet of um, Struve 23983A, we've detected a drifting ship sending out a distress call. Let's research. The NX project. It has been decided that in order to better understand potential advantages and disadvantages of future NX class ships, a prototype vessel, codenamed NX-01, must be deployed first. After its completion, the adjustment and corrections and production methods, as well as information gathered during field tests, will be used in further deployment of the NX-02 and 03. With all the theories and hypotheses around the NX project, one thing is certain. Together, the three warships will undoubtedly ensure the Rebellion's total destruction to victory. So, we now have the NX. Let's research. Oh, and we now have new research here. Um, let's go for the optical computer for that one, and let's go for um, the operation station. Low profile, stealth, hull, and solid state afterburner for that research. Can we... Oh, declare one. Well, we shall definitely do that infinite back. Diversity, infinite diversity, combination, infinite combination. Oh, and they've met someone. Okay, interesting. Hopefully they don't like that someone, because...